In our previous lessons on separation techniques, we explored methods of separating mixtures based on particle size and density, melting and boiling point. Remember, a mixture is two or more substances that have been physically, and not chemically, combined and can be separated through physical means. It is important to consider the properties of a mixture when applying separation techniques, as pure substances retain their distinct physical properties when mixed. In this lesson, we will focus on separation techniques that rely on differences in boiling point. Remember, boiling point is the transition temperature between liquid and gas. When you heat a liquid to its boiling point, it will boil and turn into a gas. Meanwhile, if you cool a gas to its boiling point, it will condense into a liquid. Many separation techniques rely on differences in boiling point, including evaporation, distillation, liquefaction, and fractional distillation. In this video, we will focus on liquefaction and fractional distillation. Before we continue looking at separation techniques, let's go check up on the pirates. They've set foot in the Dominican Republic to get more supplies. From the city centre, they can see the top of Pico Duarte, the highest mountain in the Caribbean. Long Jane Silver is certain there will be a good view from the top. Blackbeard and Long Jane Silver begin the long hike up the mountain. They follow a muddy track through a tropical rainforest. It's so warm and humid that they both work up a sweat. Soon enough, they reach the first lookout, where they get a glimpse of the city below them. But there's a long way left to go, so they don't stop for long. As they continue up the mountain, the air starts to cool down and a breeze filters through the sparse trees. At this point, the track is quite steep and Blackbeard is struggling big time. He's simply not cut out for this kind of thing and would much rather spend his time relaxing at a pub in the city. He calls it a day and walks back down the mountain. On the other hand, Long Jane Silver doesn't really mind the exercise. After all, she doesn't skip leg day. She continues up the mountain by herself. As she gets closer to the top, there are no trees to block the wind and it gets even colder. Long Jane Silver puts on a jumper and keeps walking. Eventually, she reaches the summit, where she is rewarded with a 360-degree view of the island. She hasn't seen anything like this since her last trip to Hawaii. Blackbeard is definitely missing out on this one. Now let's continue looking at separation techniques based on boiling points. Fractional distillation is a separation technique where a mixture of liquids are heated and cooled in a fractionating column, separated by their boiling points and cooled using a condenser. A fractionating column is a special piece of laboratory apparatus. Usually, it is a tall glass column that helps separate mixtures in fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is commonly used to separate a mixture of miscible liquids with similar boiling points, such as ethanol and water. Remember, miscible liquids can be mixed in any proportion to form a homogeneous mixture. Now, let's look at how to separate a homogeneous mixture of ethanol and water using fractional distillation. When we heat up the mixture, both ethanol and water change state from liquid into gas. Remember, it is possible for water to evaporate at temperatures below 100 degrees Celsius. This is why a puddle of water can evaporate on a hot summer's day. The water vapour and gaseous ethanol both start to climb the fractionating column. As they move up the fractionating column, the temperature starts to drop. As the water vapour cools, it changes back into a liquid and falls to the bottom. However, the fractionating column is not cold enough to affect the ethanol, so the ethanol remains as a gas and continues up to the top of the fractionating column. Wait a minute. This sounds just like the pirates hiking up the mountain. At the start, Water and ethanol both climb up the fractionating column, just like how Blackbeard and Long Jane Silver both started climbing the mountain. The fractionating column is colder at the top, just like how the mountain was cold and windy at the top. Water vapour climbs a short distance up the fractionating column before condensing into a liquid and falling back down. 
This is similar to Blackbeard hiking up the mountain. He became exhausted while trying to climb the steep and muddy track, so he gave up and walked back down. In contrast, ethanol remains as a gas and climbs to the top of the fractionating column. This is mirrored by Long Jane Silver, who was quite fit and was able to climb to the top of the mountain. So what happens once the ethanol reaches the top? Well, it passes through a condenser, where it is cooled from a gas into a liquid. Then it is collected in a separate container. After a while, we are left with water in the original container and ethanol in the new container. Now let's pause here to compare the separation techniques of distillation and fractional distillation. In the previous video, Blackbeard used distillation to separate seawater, which is a mixture of salt and water. In this lesson, we saw how fractional distillation can be used to separate a mixture of ethanol and water. When Blackbeard heated up the seawater, only the water evaporated. This is because water has a much lower boiling point than salt. Therefore, the salt remained in the original container. On the other hand, when we heated the mixture of ethanol and water, both of them turned into a gas and climbed the fractionating column. This is because ethanol and water have similar boiling points. Now, what will happen if we try to separate ethanol and water by distillation? Well, when we heat the mixture of ethanol and water, both of them will evaporate. Then they will both enter the condenser and turn back into a liquid. We would collect both ethanol and water in the new container. Wait a minute. This hasn't helped us at all. We're trying to separate ethanol and water, not transport the entire mixture to a new container. As you can see, distillation cannot separate two substances if they have similar boiling points. This is where fractional distillation takes over. At the bottom of the fractionating column, it is hot enough for both water and ethanol to exist as gases. However, it is cooler at the top, so water vapour turns back into liquid water. Meanwhile, ethanol has a lower boiling point than water, so it remains as a gas. Therefore, the fractionating column allows us to separate substances with similar boiling points. In general, we can use fractional distillation to separate two or more miscible liquids that have similar boiling points. For example, it can be used to separate ethanol and water, the components of air, and the components of crude oil. Now, let's look at the process of liquefaction. Liquefaction is where a substance changes state from solid or gas into liquid. In other words, when a solid melts into a liquid, or when a gas condenses into a liquid. Liquefaction can be used to separate mixtures if their components have different melting or boiling points. However, its most common application in chemistry is separating a mixture of gases, such as nitrogen and oxygen, which have similar boiling points. Firstly, the entire mixture is cooled into a liquid then fractional distillation is used to separate the components of this mixture. Let's see how liquefaction and fractional distillation can be used to separate a mixture of gases. Long Jane Silver needs to separate oxygen gas from air. Whenever the pirates go freediving for pearls and sunken treasure, they take some oxygen tanks in case of emergencies. Air is a homogeneous mixture consisting mainly of nitrogen and oxygen, along with traces of water vapour, carbon dioxide and argon. Each of these substances change state at different temperatures. Now, oxygen, argon and nitrogen have similar boiling points, which are all around minus 190 degrees Celsius. Remember, many substances in chemistry boil at temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. Therefore, if we cool nitrogen, oxygen and argon to minus 200 degrees Celsius, they will change state from gas to liquid. Long Jane Silver starts by pumping the air through a cooler. As its temperature decreases, water freezes into solid ice. As the mixture continues to cool down, carbon dioxide turns into a solid. 
The solid ice and solid carbon dioxide can be removed by filtration. The cold air passes through a filter which collects the solid's crystals but allows the air to pass through. All that remains is a homogeneous mixture of nitrogen, oxygen and argon gases. Long Jane Silver keeps cooling the air until its temperature reaches minus 200 degrees Celsius. It is so cold that the air condenses into liquid. This is because minus 200 degrees Celsius is lower than the boiling points of oxygen, argon and nitrogen. As we can see, Long Jane Silver has used the process of liquefaction because the gases have changed state into liquids. Now she has a mixture of miscible liquids. To separate the mixture of oxygen, argon and nitrogen, Long Jane Silver will need to use fractional distillation. This is because their boiling points are very close together. She connects a fractionating column to the container, then she gently warms the mixture. Remember, the fractionating column is warmer at the bottom and colder at the top, just like a mountain. As the liquid oxygen, argon and nitrogen warm up, they evaporate and turn into a gas. Then they climb up the fractionating column. This is just like the pirates climbing up the mountain. In this case, we have three gases climbing up the fractionating column. So let's consider a scenario where three pirates are climbing up the mountain. Cookie the chef is joining the expedition. If you remember from before, Blackbeard didn't really want to climb the mountain. He did it for the gram. But as we saw, he bailed and went back down the mountain. Climbing mountains is hard stuff. Now, oxygen does the same thing as Blackbeard. Oxygen boils at a higher temperature than the other components of this mixture. That means we need to warm oxygen up by a lot so that it turns into a gas. In other words, oxygen doesn't really want to turn into a gas. It just wants to remain as a liquid. Therefore, it drops back down the fractionating column. Do you remember how Long Jane Silver tackled the mountain? She was able to reach the summit easy peasy because she works out. This is exactly the same as nitrogen. Nitrogen boils at a much lower temperature than the other components of this mixture, so it doesn't like sitting down the bottom of the fractionating column as a liquid. Instead, it likes moving around in the gaseous state. Therefore, nitrogen travels to the very top of the fractionating column. Now, let's see how far Cookie can make it up the mountain. As the ship's only chef, he is often busy running around the kitchen, which helps him to stay in shape. But he also enjoys eating, perhaps too much, so he's got a bit of a belly. Overall, Cookie has average fitness. Back on the hiking trail, Cookie finds the climb up the mountain difficult, but not impossible. He's able to keep going even once Blackbeard turned back. But as they get closer to the top, Cookie starts falling behind. He starts feeling tired and sore and dreams of a nice hot meal. In comparison, the determined Long Jane Silver powers ahead. Shortly after this, Cookie gives in to temptation. He backtracks down the mountain to a cosy hut where he plans to stay the night. Then he cooks himself a well-earned meal. If we think back to the fractional distillation of air, argon behaves exactly like Cookie the chef. The boiling point of argon is in between that of nitrogen and oxygen, just like how Cookie's fitness level is in between that of Blackbeard and Long Jane Silver. Argon climbs further up the fractionating column, further than oxygen, but not as far as nitrogen, similar to how Cookie travels further up than Blackbeard, but not as far as Long Jane Silver. Just like Cookie stops halfway up the mountain, Argon stops halfway from the top of the fractionating column, where it is extracted. As we can see, Long Jane Silver has successfully separated the components of air. She can collect the liquid oxygen from the bottom of the fractionating column and use this to fill up their oxygen tanks. Now the pirates can go diving for treasure. Let's revise the separation techniques that we've covered in this lesson. In the HSC chemistry course, 
you will need to know a range of separation techniques and the physical properties that they rely on, and when to apply each one. Separation techniques that depend on differences in boiling point include evaporation, liquefaction, distillation, and fractional distillation. We discussed evaporation and distillation in the previous video. Evaporation is a separation technique where a mixture is heated to the boiling point of one component, which is evaporated. Liquefaction is where a substance changes state from solid or gas into liquid. For example, a mixture of gases can be cooled to form a mixture of liquids. Distillation is where a liquid mixture is boiled so that one component turns into a gas and is then cooled back into a liquid. This is used when there is a large difference between the boiling points of a mixture's components. Fractional distillation is a separation technique where a mixture of liquids are heated and cooled in a fractionating column, separated by their boiling points and cooled using a condenser. The substances with a higher boiling point travel further up the column. This technique is used when there is a small difference between the boiling points of a mixture's components. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on chemistry, check out our fourth video on separation techniques.